highlight of the SO British Touring Car Championship so far has been the spirited jousting of the BMWs. The race-long duel at Silverstone between Frank Sittner, leading here, and his teammate James Weaver thrilled the crowd and put a few thousand on the gate at Thruxton. It also left Sittner as close to rolling the BMW as he's ever been. In practice for round three at Thruxton, he completed the job. Anxious to match the time of Weaver, Sittner rolls at Allard, and suddenly the prospect of a repeat of Silverstone's enthralling contest has receded. Sittner, the reigning touring car champion, headed back to the pits, followed by a car which had survived comparatively unscathed, but was clearly in no condition for the race, which was barely a couple of hours away. So Sittner had to opt for the spare car, a relatively unknown quantity. There was also the problem that to run the spare, the championship rules, as applied to the packed grid, required another car to drop out. Other runners had problems, and with minutes to go to the start, Jeff Kimber Smith decided his Class D Toyota wouldn't make it, and Sittner was rescued. Jeff Kimber Smith's got time in all this one. So Sittner takes his usual place among the Class B BMWs, hanging off the boot lid of James Weaver. But ahead were the Class A Sierras, and on pole position, inevitably, was Andy Rouse, alongside Tim Harvey, Chris Hodgetts and the second caliber Sierra of Guy Edwards on the second row. 17 laps of Thruxton, and Murray Walker is the commentator. Almost at the end of the parade lap before the rolling start on Thruxton's 2.4 mile lap. 34 starters, four classes, and up front, it's the Ford Sierra Cosworths of number one, Andy Rouse, and Tim Harvey, number seven. Over the line, and Lawrence Bristow comes sprinting through from the fourth row, drops back as they go into the first right-hander, and it's Andy Rouse leading. Chris Hodges in second place, Harvey with him, and Dave Brody up into fourth position. Up to the complex. And it's Andy Rouse, Chris Hodges in the Red Sierra in second place, and Brody challenging Harvey for third position. Now up to Seagrave, the fast right-hander, third gear, 80 miles an hour. No change at the front. Then on to Noble, the left-hander. And that's Andy Rouse. His car rocking on its suspension, full power. Behind Andy Rouse, it's still Chris Hodgins in second place. Then Harvey and Brody. Look for Dave Brody in the white Sierra. There he is with Rob Brevin, the winner at Autumn Park, number 21, in fifth position. Now out of village, down to Church Corner, 130 miles an hour. It's Rouse leading, Hodgins up behind him. Then Harvey, Brody in the white Sierra, Rob Brevitt and Guy Edwards in the twin car to Andy Rouse's leading Sierra in sixth place. Through the chicane, it's Rouse leading. Chris Hodgins in second place, and then there's a three-second gap. Into Allard. Rouse with Hodgins tight up behind him. Into the chicane. This is the rest of the field coming through. The Toyota Corolla last, and he goes off. It's Leslie Lidyard going off in the Toyota Corolla, rejoining, and at the complex, Hodgins is giving Rouse a really hard time. Terrific scrap for third position. And Carl Jones nearly goes off, taking Newman. Now we're in car with the British champion Frank Sidner. Now, do you remember Silverstone? Well, that's James Weaver's BMW in front again, so don't go away, folks. 140 miles an hour on the sweeping curves at Thruxton. James Weaver leads Class B, and number 33, Frank Sittner, is in 16th place behind 14 Sierras and one BMW. And at the club chicane, second gear, 70 miles an hour, number one, Andy Rouse, leads just ahead of Hodgetts. Now the right tyres can win this race, and they're on a mixture of Pirellis, Dunlops and Yokohamas. And now we're in car with Guy Edwards in his Ford Sierra, over 500 horsepower. It'll do over 150 miles an hour. He is in sixth place. Ahead of him, Rod Gravitt. And ahead of him, Dave Brody and Tim Harvey. And watch the big white needle on the turbo gauge. 
leads, edging away from Chris Hodgins. Absolutely flat out behind Hodgins. Brody is up into third position. Brody in the White Sierra is up into third ahead of Harvey Ford, Gravit fifth, and a terrific scrap between Edwards and Bristow. There they are for sixth position. And this is Guy Edwards, 140 miles an hour. He's catching Rob Gravit. Easing up alongside the red and white Sierra. He's going to take him in the chicane. No, he's not. Gravit moves across, takes the racing line, goes into the right, into the left. It's Hodgett second, Brody third, Harvey fourth, Gravit, Edwards, Bristow, and just five seconds covering the first seven. And Guy Edwards is going for fifth position inside Rob Gravit. Is he going to stay there? Yes, he is. He goes through. Guy Edwards moves up into fifth position. And Bristow is catching Rob Gravit. Look for Bristow in the blue Sierra. Up to the complex. Hodgins is second, Brody third, Harvey there he is fourth, then Guy Edwards, Gravit, Bristow, there's Edwards. And Guy Edwards, ex Grand Prix driver, is really motoring. Now he's after the Blue Sierra in front of him. Fourth place, Tim Harvey, with Brody and Hodgins ahead of Harvey. And at Village, at 140 miles an hour, Dave Brody on the left is going to take second place, he's going to take Hodgins number 15. And Dave Brody goes through, masterly bit of driving, and look, he is fairly racing away from Chris Hodgins. Down to the chicane. And at the chicane, Tim Harvey is going past Chris Hodgins. Now, no disrespect to Brody and Harvey, but something must be wrong with Hodgins Sierra. And yes it is, Edwards, Gravit and Bristow are closing right up on Hodgins. So, on now, up to Allard. Guy Edwards pulls out. He's passing Hodgetts. Great drive by Guy Edwards, number 10. And at the complex, the order is Andy Rouse, absolutely out on his own. Dave Brody is in second position, and there is Brody. Harvey is up into third place. Edwards is fourth. Hodgetts is down to fifth position in the Red Sierra. Then it's Bristow in sixth position and Rob Gravit in seventh place. In car now with Chris Hodgetts. Fifth position, Edwards ahead. And that's Bristow, Lawrence Bristow on the right, passing Hodgetts to take fifth position and Andy Rouse is slowing up. That is the race leader, he's been passed by Brody. Harvey and Edwards pass him. Oh my goodness, now there's Bristow going up to fourth. And in a moment, yes, Hodgins and Gravit go past fifth and sixth, and Andy Rouse is out of the race. So now, 44-year-old Dave Brody from Hurley, there he is, leads. He's won over 200 races in 26 years. And Harvey and Edwards, second and third, and Guy, we're with him now, is really on his way. Allard corner, 100 miles an hour. He's catching the British sports car champion, Tim Harvey. Look at that turbo gauge. Into the complex, right up with Harvey. And Harvey's teammate, Lawrence Bristow, in the second Blue Sierra, is catching Guy. He's made a fine recovery after a jump start. And Andy Rouse abandons his Sierra. It's a very poor 1989 for Andy. But Dave Brody, who's concentrated on the handling of his car rather than speed, has got a nice cushion. There's the battle for second, third and fourth. Tim Harvey, Guy Edwards, Lawrence Bristow. In car with Edwards. He can see second place ahead. He's inching up on Harvey at the approach to the chicane. He's got the momentum. It's all going to be down to braking as they come into the chicane. Guy Edwards is going through. But he's lost it. Look at the steering wheel. Guy Edwards goes sideways. Harvey goes on. Bristow moves up into third position. Guy Edwards goes down to fourth. And that will surely have rooted his tyres. And now, number 10, Guy Edwards, down to fourth position, is chasing Lawrence Bristow. And back at the chicane, the class-leading BMWs are at it again. Number 32, James Weaver, leads Class B. Just... He's just ahead of his teammate, Frank Sidner. They're 12th and 13th behind David Pinkney's Pink Sierra. At the complex, 
Silverstone ended in harsh words when Sidner rammed Weaver and he's very close to James again.